Okay, today we're going to learn how to make a hammer using three quarter bar stock brass. And I'm just going to go step by step and explain what tools I'm using as we go. And it should be an easy, pretty, easy, pretty easy project. We'll take our stock. center drill. Well first we're going to face it. center drill, I got a number two center drill. center. just spins. Touch it off. Bring it in. Two, four, six, eight. And take off about 10 thou. Use the power feed on this. Okay, we 
we've turned our diameter, just ten thou off of that three quarter stock. Uh, now we're going to turn. Half inch diameter, 700 thou depth. We're going to grab this. We're going to touch. Center for our 700. Touch off. anything with speeds and keys. This lathe has one speed. The belt blocks me from using one of the pulleys and the other pulley I've just never used. I get everything done at the same speed. I want to say it's 370 RPM.
fish on all of these diameters, so these doesn't need to be good. The long part is going to get narrow. Small diameter is going to get turned into a 3/18 thread, 3/16 thread, 3/8 sixteenths. said at the beginning, you're using 12, 12 inch long bar stocks, or round stocks. The hammer handle is going to be about 7.5 inches. The hammer head is 3 inches. So really those numbers, you play around with it. Make a little longer handle if you want. If you probably use a longer handle, to be honest. But it's a good little tack hammer. If we're using it for assembling parts, is what I use it for mostly. It's good for handing out to friends and neighbors, too. Simple project you can knock out in two to two, three hours. I'm going to measure it again because this needs to fit inside of a 500 thou milled countersink. So you actually want like 499. So we're at 516. I'm going to take 17 off. That way it fits in there much easier. So 17. show you why we do that a little on this side. Put it on this truck. size about 499, 498 so it fits in that milled slot in the hammerhead. Alright, time to turn the taper. Usually I do 5 degrees. I've done 3 degrees. Three degrees. I'm gonna try eight today. This is something different. It really just matters how long you want your taper. The lower the number, the lower the degrees, the longer your taper is gonna be. You're gonna be limited by whatever your machine can do anyways. Mine's like two and a half inches. Um, that's all the movement I have in the cross feed or the compound. Uh, make sure you start. 
start so that you're fully extended all the way to the right and that you're just past the end of your taper. You can lock your carriage, apron, whatever. All your movement is going to be coming from the here and here. Watch your fingers. That's part of the reason I'm doing the eight, is because it gets you a little farther away from the chuck with your fingers. You don't want to take big cuts with this. This your final couple of passes, your final pass at least, you want to make sure it's go nice and slow. Get a good finish. The less time you can sandpaper, the better.
slow on this one. transition as good as you can get it. We'll hit it with a file and clean right up. Alright, now that the taper is turned, we're going to choke up on the workpiece as much as we can. I just hit 370 and call it a day. We're going to do this to a length of uh, 
First thing I ever made on the lathe was a little tiny screwdriver, tiny screwdriver for the uh, the dials. First thing I made on this lathe. Relief to 280 or to 370. So we're gonna take off 90 thou. I'm gonna throw it in the back here.
great. change gearboxes. Awesome, to say the least. Um, take out the crossfeed.
you're going to want to use thread wires. Or you can just use a 3 8 nut to check your fit. Or something that's not critical. Time is narrow. We get set up. Alright, narrowing. You got two different types of tools. This is the older style, this is the newer style. Uh, I've tried using this before. The results weren't great. The results come out great with this. good and it still functions but it just kind of overlaps but if you want to get the true diamond hopefully I can show you how to do that is Make sure you got clearance. 
is that you don't want to be perfectly up and down. You don't want both cylinders on top of each other necessarily. You want them kind of more. You don't want them like this. You want them kind of more like this. To the side closest to you. down as much as you can. Make sure you're in back gear. Make sure you use tons of tap magic or oil, whatever you got. We're lined up. We're clear. We're in reverse. We're in back gear. twice the speed that I usually do, just because I want to see if it'll work. So we might not get a good neural, we might get a good neural, I'm not sure. But I'm running at a feed rate of 10 thousandths per revolution. The neural looks good, from what I can tell. It's hard to tell where it's spinning, but...
reset my gear. So don't forget. tool came with the lathe. This is for the tailstock. This is for the reversing gear. I don't know if it's original to the machine, but it's a beautiful little tool for what I need. Alright. I'm going to go just to the edge of the knurling. Lock the carriage if you want. diamond gotta clean that up
camper at the end. of our stock.
six minutes. All right, now we're going to part this off again, flip it over, and do a tamper. Do that behind. Go 
to the depth of Precision Matthews 25 MV. It's a 750 watt motor. It's got two gears. I only ever use the one.
Loctite. And I don't want it to mess with it. And really with this tab of brass, you don't even need it. Certainly you're going to have to chop off like two threads to get rid of this gap. So really just look to see how many, how much you got to take off to clear that. So about an eighth of an inch. Diamond neural on it. Great gift for friends, family. Easy task you can do in about two hours. Fun little project for an afternoon. Thanks for joining me.